Hi, today is Monday and today has been hard because I woke up later than usual and of course then everything went out of whack and then I felt useless and sad for lying in bed and you know whatever but then I chose to kind of just tell myself to let it go and just carry on with my day but you know in the back of my head it feels like really thick and like tight and like thumpy and I don't feel physically nice but I'm pretty sure like emotionally like part of it is from there so they're kind of connected so I'm gonna try and be peppy even though it's hard it's one of those like stand around the mirror and try to smile things and today is not uh mm, I'm gonna stop saying that actually today is going to be just fine and I'm gonna try my best okay so today is Monday I'm trying to keep Monday really chill like Fridays because like Wednesdays are kind of heavy topic wise because of education stuff or ADHD and mental health and on Monday I kind of now want to just you know do my shower do like some simple face like some basic ass just moisturize lined like shadow of two fingers you know lip balm and then we're out the door because I realize if I hem and haw too much then I get the whole imposter syndrome and like what is it the RS, RSD RSD is just like why why are you doing this and then I'm gonna really get into my head and you know very bad stuff trying to do my best so if you noticed I'm holding this furry furry book and I did say some episodes ago so I'm sorry if it's out of order with how I plan it because you know if you have ADHD you know what I mean and I said that I was gonna talk about fighting with ADHD like not fighting ADHD but fighting with ADHD like when your brain is like and you're in an argument or a discussion or a heated discussion with someone you care about or someone you work with um in this context it's more for someone you care about in which case this is my boyfriend and yeah he's kind of been with me through the big burnout of my 2017 2018 where one day i just woke up in bed and i just cried and i was paralyzed and i just didn't want to anything anymore and that's when i really felt the brunt of all my years of just pure rat racing like 14 hour days, seven days a week you know without rest and then that constant need to hustle and well that really fucking killed me and I will probably do an episode about burnout because in this day and age like I've known so many people who have gone through it and so many friends and it sucks and it's a real thing and, and I think it's hard when you're in it to realize that you know you're not you just end up beating yourself up more if that makes sense like I was just paralyzed for about a year I've not been the same and until now I think it's kind of changed who I am now and how I see things and it's really affected my life and some people might be like oh you're just being a soft softy but but I think my pain is valid and that's kind of all that matters right what's valid to you so we are going to begin i think sorry rambly on adhd stuff for monday so in the more chill setting uh, i want to talk about firstly yesterday i had a breakdown i was planning to do some edits and some art and like really work on my site which i said i wanted to launch by last week i have not that's not great but i'm gonna keep trying and hopefully get it out by this week and that's just that like it's hard to accept it but i'm learning to just be like okay fine fine i'm gonna try my best and get out the door so it's better than just crap and just not doing anything and just being like <laughs> okay so yesterday i had a like biggish kind of breakdown because i was planning to do my store stuff and i was in like the, the midst of it i don't know if you can relate but adhd people like sometimes we go into this like low like this deep flow like hyper focus where like finally all our stars align usually our stars are like just fucked right and i was just doing like really big heavy paperwork and like reading stuff and like filling up forms and everything and then suddenly like eric came in and he was like do you want to go out and oh my god i just like i just started freaking out and like crying and like being so angry and sad and just oh my god i have a lash in my eye. hold on sorry there we go and you just pick your lash out like this like kind of like squeeze it and then pull it and usually it's a loose lash that's trying to like, get your eye i feel like no one knows this enough they just rub it or maybe they do so i just kind of freaked out because you know it wasn't really like like i didn't blow up but i kind of like just vibrated internally and i was like mm -hmm. You know, like, it really fucked me up. And and I was thinking about it. And, you know, he's been the best, most patient partner. Like, he's studied up about this to learn more about how to work with me. And I've been studying up more to be a better partner and work with it and him. And so he sat with me through my emotion. And he, he just held me and he let me process what was going on in my head because I didn't understand it. I was just mad. When we get mad, we get... I have a Google sheet now. We get, you know, we get super emotional and our emotions are very strong. We don't have the the bit in the brain that 
that stops our first reactions from like holding the horses at the door so it's kind of like all or nothing very sad very happy all of that and i was just very sad and very mad so we waited it out okay and how i managed to pause it to him was when you have adhd it's like every day you wake up and there's this big bookshelf that's, that's kind of like your brain or your organizing stuff or your life or your day and or even your hour if you're like in one of those days and then like you wake up every day and there's a pile of books on the floor the shelf is empty right like the books are messy they're not organized by author color name title all of that is just shit on the floor you wake up and like you're just trying to get out of bed so that's your first fight and then you're like oh my god you fucking file this book and you're like okay one book by one book it could be as small as brushing your teeth it could be as big as like submitting a important work email and you're just trying to like slot it in your day and you're trying to remember where to put it in your day and you're trying to remember where you put it because this bookshelf like it appears and it disappears and it appears and it disappears and then sometimes you just can't find your bookshelf and you don't know where your books are but you have to organize it because when you do find your bookshelf you want to know what fucking book you gotta take out so there's that and we do that every day i think all our lives and also on the side as your day goes on people start throwing in pamphlets like oh do you look, look at this hey look at that or if someone just chucks a whole freaking bible or dictionary and you're just like ducking but you have to catch it because you can't lose it and sometimes there's no space in the bookshelf so you start putting books on the side you start trying to slot the pamphlets in between and you're just like <laughs> and then you get in flow flow is when the books are in the bookshelf and it's okay for a while so right in that moment when you get shaken out of hyper focus or flow you know in, in this case eric was like hey you want to go out which was to him chill as fuck so it's not his fault and you know this that's in the book that's in the bookshelf but it feels like he just took the whole bookshelf and he was like Pfft. and all your books are on the floor all your pamphlets and all your hard work and oh, i'm getting emotional thinking about it but uh, it's just you know the cat that goes on the table and knocks the glass down while making eye contact but you love the cat and you can't kill the cat. and you have to you have to be the bigger person you have to be the good human owner and it kind of feels like that except the bookshelf is your life and you've worked very hard your whole life to get good at organizing your bookshelf and finally you did it and you know oh it's like attacking your whole life and it's attacking everything you've worked for everything you've stood for everything you've practiced and oh my god i just i was devastated and so that was how i felt and when i explained it to him he he understood that was something else and, and it helped me calm down by working through it and by processing how it felt like so now like i'm very visual so if i can picture the books now and if they fall i'm trying to react better to picturing visualizing the books falling and just being okay i'll pick it up it's hard it's gonna be an uphill battle but i gotta get better at it because if every time someone comes and knocks my bookshelf down they might not mean it but if i get so fucked up every time it happens like i'm going to waste like years of my life being angry that the books fell and not picking it up like if i get really quick at picking it up or being like eh then you know good for me because whatever book is left on the shelf gets read for the day you know rather than me just like kicking the bookshelf or burning the bookshelf down which is what i feel like doing so that was hopefully relatable to someone out there and you know we just got to get better at being okay with, with that stuff and just dropping our books and the pamphlets always going to come in and not all of them are useful and i drink some tea okay so that was yesterday's breakdown that i wanted to share with you now fighting on adhd so i have this llama notebook that i got from tesco when i was in dublin and it's furry and it's and it's so soft oh my god i digress i spent so long just like it just feels nice and i think it helps a lot and i kind of like kept it a long time not using it because i have order tendencies which i get from my family which i will be covering some point this year but i opened it i like just drew a line and i tore out the first page and i was like it's ruined i can use it now I have this notebook and this is currently my fight book until it runs out or my discussion book with Eric. So when we have a fight or a discussion, I live and die by this book. So it's important that you pick something you like or it can be a piece of paper, but it's more fun if it's furry. I don't know, pick a cool notebook that you like. One of those like weird decorative ones. They're fun. And this is a fight. We were out, we were taking our trash and then in the, in the bulky items disposal, we found this amazing bookshelf and I was like, oh, bookshelf. And... You know, I always need more storage space, which is bad because I need to stop buying so many things. So I have been cutting down on that, but I was like, I do need a shelf for my shit. And so we talked about it and then we took it up. But then he looked uncomfortable and I looked uncomfortable because I felt bad that I was taking stuff because I was like, oh, am I beginning to hoard again? And he was like, is she beginning to hoard again? He had all these concerns and I had all my concerns as well. And I felt like shit, but I was happy because I got it. And then I was like, I felt like shit because I thought he was taking it and helping me out against his will. And he was going to like, hold that hatred against me. And I was really like 
getting in my fucking head. So I decided to give this thing a shot. So this is called active listening if you want to get all like nerdy wordy about it. And it involves a few steps and I've kind of tried to summarize everything that everyone said on the internet into really like digestible things. And this is what fighting on ADHD is like for me and what I recommend. Okay, first thing to do is to pay attention because when you're fighting with ADHD, like you just want to say everything because like the rest of your life, if you don't say it now, you have to forever hold your peace because you can't remember what the fuck you were going to say. And if you don't say what you're going to say, are you going to remember to connect it to this other thing that you wanted to say? Or oh, remember last year or that time last week when you... It's like that, except like it's your whole life. Your whole life is connected to this one moment, this one fight, this one point. And you have to link it or you're going to forget it. And then you're not going to get your point through. And you're not going to be understood. You're never going to be like fulfilled. You never fight fair because you never get the chance to say your piece. I know, right? Okay, so pay attention and withhold judgment are two points that I skimmed off the internet. This is hard because you want to say shit all the time. So that's where this notebook comes in. And with each sentence, I usually get like three thoughts I want to rebut with and I write it down. I shut the fuck up and I write it down and I listen. And some of the things say like make eye contact and stuff, but like, I'm sorry, I'm going to pick writing it down instead of staring at you all the time because this is better for both of us. And that's okay, right? You can't just be like, because then your brain, if they've been with you for some time, they're going to know your brain is like Cartoon Network, like sped up. And that's not good for anyone. So you do you. If you can do more eye contact, do that. If you can't do more eye contact, fuck okay. it. So pay attention and withhold judgment. So that's really important. You can't like, you can't get mad. If he says something or she says something or they say something that you were like, oh, but I did not. No, no, no. You put it here. You put it here and you be the big person and you write it down and you wait. You wait your turn because this this is worth it like this is this is the most worth it thing i've done in my life so far when it comes to like being a better human or being a better partner so the rest of the points say reflect clarify visualize and do that all here you know if you want more clarification you can ask them on the spot but to be honest once i go off on those like i kind of just keep going it's too risky for me you could probably do it if you can do it like good for you but i i cannot i need to pick on or off talking or not talking and just write so i reflect I clarify, I visualize in here and I ask him to pause once in a while if he's speaking too fast for me to write down all my baby arguments back to when because when I was five years old, my mom did this and so I react that way. But you have to understand that I love you and I don't mean to hurt you, but I need you to understand how I feel and where I come from. That stuff, all of that, all the time. So then at the end of his piece, firstly, they will be surprised that you kept quiet for so long and hopefully they like your notebook. Get a cute pen with a feather or peacock. Just do it your way. Then you want to summarize it so you can ask them to be like, okay, hold on. And you check your notes. If you can see, there are like many lines connected to other lines and then there's arrows and then arrows connect to arrows because all your thoughts connect and maybe point six, which is what you wanted to say, connects to point two. And Point two is connected to something from when you were 18 and you had the wrong salad order or some shit. Even this sheet of paper takes the piss. It's a bit small for me, but I guess it's good for now until I learn how to be better. But if the paper is too small as well, you don't want that because then you can't say your piece and then you get frustrated. And then like if you have to flip the page, then you lose your connections little brain connection things and so just pick a size that's great for you and figure it out then when you're done with that you want to like make sure you connected all your dots over here because if you miss a point like point six connected to point three and you're, you've talked about point three and you've closed that chapter and you're like oh but actually six is connected to three. like it, it's okay at the start but like it will be more efficient if you connected it or, or, or don't or don't like this is better than whatever right just just you know give it a shot then if you have more questions you want to be like okay so okay for example he said he was worried about being controlling and I was worried about not giving him the freedom to express himself because he would be controlling when act. this is a decision that we should make together about the freaking shelf, right? Because <laughs> when you're in a relationship, you fight about some random shit and this is one of them. So, and I was like, you are not controlling. The fact that you're even discussing this with me is not controlling and I want to get better. I want to be a good partner. So I have to listen to you. We have to meet in the middle. We can't control each other, but we can work together to make decisions. And then, oh, this connects to my childhood of how like my mom would make the decisions for everything or like my dad would make the decisions for like some other things and it was always really clear cut who decided what but that's not where i want us to be right and then it goes into this bigger thing like oh what type of relationship we want it to be and, you know it gets a bit like the future you know like how it goes on and on and on the point is you're not controlling let's get better 
So that was just all I wrote. And like that happens in an ADHD brain in like three seconds. And you just like, and you extract the essence of it. And I hope I get better as I go, but I was quite proud of this one. So when you connected everything, things like fearing you become your mom and getting a Tetris hoarding mentality, then when you're ready, you say your piece, you do your little speech and you just, you say it because if they are neurotypical, they will be able to listen, understand and give you feedback the normal way, kind of like this, but all in their head. And that's fine. You're not disadvantaged. You just have a cool notebook. So you say your piece and then when they say their piece back, if they do uh, have many other points, then use the next page and keep going until you've solved everything in probably the calmest fucking way that you have in your life. Which made me emotional because then I realized there's this whole other way I could have been solving conflicts and that I can do better and we can always do better. And I think I do want to always do better for people in my life, people I love and care about. And in another sense, you guys, and I hope it helps you guys as well because everyone deserves a good fight. Like good fights make you feel so, so listened to and heard and understood and and when you give in and when you meet in the middle i mean it feels nice it feels like like getting puppies or like warm pancakes in the morning and you you feel great you're just like fuck it killed it got it understood a human on a nice equal level didn't make it worse didn't verbally call them any names didn't spit shit out in rage because i was too busy writing in my furry great book and you know no regrets because if you forget a point go back you're not gonna forget it it's okay you have adhd but you wrote it down and oh emotional again so emotional and i just think that that was beautiful it was a really beautiful thing i learned so that is how you fight with adhd happy fighting fuck shit up and like learn about your partner learn about the people in your life and learn about your family and tell them what you're going to do when you're not fighting so that they don't go like what are you doing and then you get more pissed so you want them to be like okay okay look, she, she gotta get her notebook and then and then we're gonna go she gives everyone some time to calm down just a little bit but that helps a lot also remember to drink a glass of water before fighting or like take a sip because it helps okay so that that's my monday thing we're on 24 minutes now i guess we're aiming for 30 30 is what we aim for a lot of fucking editing to do but i did talk a lot today and i also realized fun fact that if i watch youtube videos on 1.25 like normal videos i can watch it longer and i can watch it better and i do enjoy it better so if you haven't tried it you can give it a shot it's it's pretty it's pretty cool but these videos hopefully are fast enough for people with adhd and if you don't have adhd then maybe you could slow it down i haven't tried it but i might try it after i upload this one and if you have adhd and you're watching this tell me how the speed is is it good is it fast is it slow but there's always the toggle so i hope that you know and i do want to remind myself not to do like jump cuts to like so last week i said that i would do this and then i cut it to myself because i hate watching myself repeat shit or like i hate watching like videos like repeat video shit i'm just like give me new content give me like fresh content i've seen it before just say it again you're on the screen go it also helps that i don't know the uh, what my schedule is but i'm trying to do it i am trying to do it better with airtable which is like the super og like organizing thing you, there's a free version and i put the link below it's kind of like excel if you hate excel my people who hate excel fuck excel so hard but they made excel fun and they made excel cute and they made excel a bit easier to use and i kind of think that if i get the hang of it i'll be able to automate and plan my life a lot better and my content for everyone so this week, big quick rundown of this week's content. Hopefully I will stick to it. I think I will because I kind of made it as easy to do with my brain and my heart and my ADHD as possible. I will try to launch my art store by this week because I am almost there except when it comes to the payment cardi testing thing and I saw so many words and I was like, oh, I fucking read all this shit anyway that when you figure that out launch my fucking store stop feeling imposter syndrome think that my work is okay and that i have value and so do you your work is great your work is okay you have value you are good enough whoever needs to fucking hear it that was for you right at top at top time every wednesday whether it be adhd education turn on your notifications so whenever i put up a new video monday wednesday friday slash saturday you get the notification i hope you've liked my free songs so far and i'm pretty proud of how they are going even though they're not like the greatest like i'm not mozart but i'm kind of happy that you know i am spitting them out like i'm doing something that helps me release my inner music tension stuff so i do realize i ramble a lot and i maybe some of you are playing this now in the background and you're like okay i'm gonna do my shit gonna make my coffee gonna go pee before i watch more youtube this wednesday is the do you have adhd quiz and it's gonna be in two parts part one and part two i haven't decided whether i'm gonna finish it in like a scheduled episode or should i just give it to you on wednesday 
and then part two on Thursday or Friday because I don't know how long I take to edit it. And then if I have that video on Friday, then I won't have time to edit or shoot a Friday video. And then that's all of that. And then like, oh, and then the music and how am I going to upload everything? And just that makes me feel a bit nauseous and sick. But what will come out this week is that quiz to hopefully see whether you should get started or check yourself or relate to whether you have ADHD. And if you do have ADHD, you know, more topics coming up will be tests for women, how women are affected, you know, just us because of our hormones, which, you know, eh. and RSD, rejection sensitive dysphoria, all the feelings, how you're more emotional if you have ADHD and how that is just okay. And, you know, how, how to manage it and what now, which is important. And executive dysfunction and yeah, there's a big sheet there. I can't look at all the words. They stress me out. And I hope to see you guys very, very soon. Thank you for tuning in. It is an amazing Monday. The weather is great here today. There is sun. I have my vitamin D. And remember that, again, you are enough. You are valid. Your work is important. And, you know, just be who you wish you saw when you were 15, which is what I am trying to do. And if not, just think about when you were when you were 15 and think about how far you've come like the fact that we are even alive especially if you have gone through some dark fucking shit is amazing on its own and if you're in a like not great place career-wise or life-wise just hold on to the fact that you are here right now and you have internet and you are watching this and i hope i reach someone i am gonna go and i'm going to see you on wednesday by editing that massive video thing that i shot thank you so much again for tuning in i don't know how many times i've said thank you but i've been receiving messages and texts and comments and calls and and it, it's really moved me and it's really helped me like kind of like get my shit together and keep filming this for everyone even on the days where i feel very very hard and my following you know i love all of you all of you are like so, so let's just be better let's be kinder people let's not judge people let's be let's be good people and call out shit people so that people become less shit i will see you on wednesday